East Coast, West Coast, I bet most of us synth addicts have heard about these terms, but probably don't really know what's behind them. However, it's valuable to dig a bit into the details here, because it can open up new perspectives in electronic music creation. I will keep the theory quite shallow in this episode and like to outline the principle of East Coast synthesis, suggest a fundamental set of modules and demonstrate a basic patch. And one of the next videos will then cover the complementary West Coast approach. East Coast synthesis together with its West Coast counterpart emerged in the 60s and um, the East Coast approach is strongly associated with Bob Moog, who manufactured his synth in New York, so at the US East Coast, and that's where the name comes from. It evolves around the combination of oscillators and filters, and often uses a classic keyboard as primary interaction element. East Coast synths, therefore, can usually be played like a piano or an organ. And this was important to Bob Moog, because he wanted to address musicians who already play an instrument. And with this keyboard, they can quickly familiarize with an East Coast synth. And if you look into the patchbooks of classic synth, like the MS-20 from Korg, you will find patches that try to mimic real-world instruments like guitars, trumpets, pianos, and so on. The core element of an East Coast synth is the combination of oscillator and filter, and this is called subtractive synthesis. Since the oscillator provides a rich or characterful waveform, like a saw or square wave, with lots of harmonics, and the filter removes an adjustable portion of um, this character to shape the sound. I will use the System 100 from Behringer here in this example and I just connected the oscillator with the keyboard CV and we are now listening to the pulse wave output, which we can already play in a musical sense now, just using the keyboard and its CV output which we feed into this voltage controlled oscillator. Changing the waveform now results in a different character, but it's still a bit um, raw, so let's move on. Next we use the filter to adjust the character of the sound. And this is a low pass filter, which means it um, filters out the higher harmonics of the sound. This already sounds much smoother and um, a bit more natural than the um, raw saw or square wave. The next component in the audio path of a classic subtractive synth is the amplifier, which adjusts the amplitude, or in other words, the loudness of the sound. Amplifiers can also saturate and add some of their own character to the output, but we'll leave this out for now and just use the amp in its nominal operating range. Finally, we need some modulation for the filter and the amplifier, and typically we use envelopes here, or LFOs. Envelopes generate an adjustable modulation voltage, usually triggered by a key press, and LFOs output a slow waveform, just like the audio oscillator, but much slower. And both are typically used to modulate filters and the amplifiers, and sometimes also the oscillators, for example, for a vibrato. So now we are able to create very musical results and we can achieve different characters by adjusting the envelopes, um, the LFO speed or waveform and um, the filter cutoff or resonance. And when we add a second oscillator, we already have a very rich and warm analog sound.
though subtractive synthesis doesn't have to be analog. You can also use digital oscillators and filters. The EDP was, for example, used digital oscillators and an analog filter, and this filter actually made it famous. This is the Döpfer recreation of this WASP filter here. So to sum this up, we need a primary sound source in our subtractive synth and this is typically a VCO, so a voltage controllable oscillator and this provides us a basic waveform and typically we can adjust the pitch of this um, VCO by using a keyboard or a control voltage. The basic sound from the VCO goes into a filter, which is typically a low-pass filter, and the filter is used to shape the sound and adjust the character by removing an adjustable portion of the harmonics. The filter output typically goes into a voltage-controllable amplifier or VCA to adjust the loudness. And finally, we need some uh, modulation, and we typically use envelopes or LFOs here. Many of the classic synths follow this scheme. Um, of course the Minimoog does, but also the ARP Odyssey, the MS-20 and also modern ones like the Behringer Neutron. So in one of my next videos I will cover the West Coast approach, which is very different compared to this East Coast subtractive one. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.